In this video, we're going to take a look at the Station Smarts Infra's reporting. The Infra's reporting is managed through the Activity Tracker, but it gets its own button on the main menu. Clicking on the Infra's button is going to take us to the Activity Tracker Infra's Processing tab. The Infra's Processing tab grabs the emergency responses in the, emerg in the Activity Tracker, and it puts it in the Infra's Processing tab if it requires an Infra's report. It has a lot of filtering options here. We automatically start your filtering for not started in process, ready for review and reviewed needs action. But we can also filter by your name. Well, let's say I'm gonna filter for my name. I'm logged in as our designer, Gregory Pika. When we do that filter, we'll update the filter and you can see the report that we need to complete. When we click start, we get that very quick notification that it was updating the form. It grabs all the information that we need from the roster and the emergency response, and it pre-fills the data as we go. The rest of the information here is for us to fill out, and this is real-time error checking. This is making sure that all of the inverse requirements are gonna be met. We also have green boxes to correspond with those required elements. If we scroll down, you can see the address information was automatically placed in the inverse form for us. We can choose the incident code. In this case, it was a medical. We have reference use information over here for the, all of the medical entries. If we're not sure which one of these to choose, we can also choose the code search, which will allow us to go through and search up to three words looking for a particular entry. I'm going to say that this was a 320. In the case of a 320, we have a fire department comment that says make sure this is the appropriate use of the other code. So maybe we won't use 320. Let's go a little bit more descriptive. Let's say it was a 322. Now that the 322 code has been filled in, that's no longer required and we can keep moving on. We're missing the arrival time for this response. So you can see those fields are green. In this case, I'm going to say that the time of the day was the same. And if this last unit cleared was 1950, let's go ahead and say that this one was 1940. If we put in a wrong time, we're gonna get automatic feedback that this was incorrect. Let's say it's 35. There's that error code telling us that it's the wrong time. So we can say 40, that meets all of the requirements that it's after the alarm time, but before the cleared time. And we also have these special study questions. The special studies has been expanded in Station Smarts to allow you to have your department's questions defined. Um, this is be above and beyond what INFERS requires. INFERS does have this FEMA required study for 9244, which is basically the COVID question asking if COVID-19 was involved. In this case, we'll say no COVID-19 was not a factor. We have the hazardous exposure, which allows us to say whether or not our firefighters were exposed. And if they were, who was it that was exposed? In this case, I'll say not applicable because no one was exposed. We also have the Narcan study. In this case, it was a motor vehicle accident. So Narcan was not used and we'll say not applicable. There's an unlimited option of special studies that you can have defined here for administration to get the questions answered that they need for their reporting. As we scroll down, we can see the actions taken codes are required. We need at least one code. We can have up to three reported to the state, but we can have unlimited codes for our own purposes, and only the first three will be reported. In this case, I'm gonna say that medical services, we provided first aid to check for injuries, and we transported a person to the hospital. We have the reference use over here for the action taken codes. And we also have a code search in case we're not sure what codes to use. Scrolling down, you can see that our apparatus and personnel automatically pre-filled based on the roster that we had defined, which said all of the apparatus that responded and also the personnel that were working for that day. If we keep scrolling, a lot of these other information was all filled in and we're good to move forward. For the property use, in this case, we don't need to use the property use. I'm gonna say there was no property use. The person entity involved, we've got owner and uh, person involved information. This is where being connected to an address is helpful. We can automatically have the information that we have posted here show into the form. 
So let's say that I'm a part of this incident. We can also insert it to the form and it's been saved in the property contacts as well. Moving forward, we have our remarks. The remarks are required uh, by most departments, but it's not required by the inference reporting. In that case, we have it yellow to show that it, you do need to fill it out by your department's requirements. And we've given you a bigger pop-up window in case you have a lot of remarks to put in. We give you templates to help you with those remarks. So if you have uh, a template defined, then you can choose that template, insert it in there. And anything that you normally say would automatically be pasted there. And then you can make changes just for this particular incident. We also have the incident details, so we could insert those from the emergency response and then make changes to them if we need to. And we have the supporting remarks, which allows other people to also post their comments, even if they can't access the inference report. When we scroll down, our last piece here is our authorization. So we can mark who was the officer in charge of the shift. and we can also mark our designation. Once the form is complete, the inference form is gonna show you in all of the error checking throughout the form that there are no errors left. This means that the inference requirements have been met. You may not have met your department's requirements yet, but infers will accept your report. When you click close, we're gonna set it ready for review and we're gonna set it to the person responsible. In this case, I'm gonna say that the approver is myself. and we're gonna click continue. Now you can see that it's marked for ready for review. I am the approver. We've got the responding apparatus. We've also got the incident code that was used and we can view this in more detail. Because there are remarks, we can also see those remarks listed here um, and we'd be able to see any incident remarks as well. And we can see travel time if there is any reasonable travel time there. We can open the form in order to make the further change. In the case of an approver, we would look at the form and then choose our name as the approver. We will mark it that it is approved, falls from view. Back on the main menu, we have some buttons to help you further with your inference reporting. The Infer status allows you to see what reports still need to be completed. We can look at a particular person, we can look at a particular date range, or we can just see everything that falls into a particular category. And when we click continue, we're going to see, we're going to get a report of all of those entries. The data analysis module is for administration, and this allows you to run reports on all of the Infer's reports that have been completed. You get a monthly view of all of your emergency responses and what categories they fall in. We also have an infer summary review that's only going to give you the data from all of those infers reports based on the date range you choose. We also have apparatus run reports so you can see how many times the apparatus responded to an infers report. And we have the special studies. So any special studies that are defined, this is going to allow you to run the answers for those studies so you can get back the data on the answers that your report preparers are giving. We also give you infographics, which is going to follow along with your infers reporting as well. Any data that you've entered for emergency responses or infers reporting is available for the infographics. And then finally, if any of these are not meeting the requirements that you need, we also provide you with a raw data export so you could print out the data that you need and manipulate it to meet your need. We've been taking a look at Station Smart's infers reporting. If you have further questions, you can take a look at our website at stationsmarts.com or our YouTube channel, Station Smarts. Thank you so much for watching.